right see? In yeah, right in there. Right you got that? And then I'm just going to, here, you, you, you hold them like that, right? I'm just going to, that keeps me safe, you know, whatever. So, all right, you get, all right? So, so you, all right, so make sure, because I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you a star, baby. Ted Poley, danger, danger. Are we gonna roll soon? Is this uh <laughs> You're keeping that, right? It took me, you know, two decades to become an overnight success. It was great. When it finally took off, people noticed us. It was great. Next thing I knew, we went from zero to arenas with KISS. And of course, they're my heroes. They're the, you know, the reason I got into this. As a matter of fact, I even wear them. Um, I love KISS, and at my first KISS concert, uh, the bombs went off for Detroit Rock City, and I decided to make my career decision at that point. I stuck with it, and it hasn't been the easiest ride, but um, it's been fun. It was arenas with KISS all of a sudden, it was videos, it was getting recognized everywhere, and it was everything you always wanted. A lot of work, and uh, but awesome. <laughs> At the time that the second album came out, we were pretty hot, and that's why they decided to proceed instead of going straight for the ballad, which, as it turned out, they used us as the example of what not to do in the music business, because when we got hot with things like Naughty Naughty, had we gone for that ballad, I believe that would have been the difference between a few million and lots of millions. Um, but they decided we're hot, let's go back into the studio and do another record right away. Back then, you know, a record for all of you watching was a thing that we used to do back then. They, they're coming back now, but uh, we used to do albums, let's say. So we did the album and uh, screw it, and it was awesome. I mean, and we had, the, again, the, the monkey, you know, and, the, and the, the big video, and we should have taken that video budget and bought apartment buildings or something with that, because I don't know how much that cost, but it was a lot of zeros, maybe $300,000. And if you were up late one night, probably around 1990, you might have seen it on, on MTV at three in the morning. Um, but that was it, it was over. All of a sudden somebody flipped the light switch and just as we were about to really hit it, um, something happened. I, you know, the switch went off and all of a sudden everyone was wearing flannel and growing goatees. It was almost as if the sun didn't rise one day. <laughs> I can't even explain it. All of a sudden there was this music that was happening as a matter of fact, Danger Danger was on tour. We had come, I believe, off of Alice Cooper or Kiss or something. We were on our first big tour all across Canada, coming down the top of the western United States. And we pulled into a little town called Seattle. And there was these guys running around, and they looked like they hadn't bathed in a few weeks. And, you know, back then, you really, you know, it was all about how high your hair could be and how... You know, it was the scene, and we saw these guys, they looked like they hadn't bathed in forever. And they were warming up for us, because they were the local favorites at the time. And their fans, were I'd never seen anything like this. Um, and they were called Alice in Chains. And uh, they went from warming up for, believe it or not, Danger Danger. And uh, I believe it was literally five minutes later, um, they were the biggest thing in the world. And people were looking in their rearview mirrors, you know, at me at my new day job. <laughs> uh, look, when I was a kid, I loved a show called The Partridge Family. I always wanted to be a partridge. I wanted to tour and play music and live in a bus and do what I wanted to do. And be careful what you wish for out there because you just might get it. Um, you know, that's what ended up happening. And then, you know, you come back and you say, wow, I really expected there to be a, well, first of all, a driveway and then a Ferrari in the driveway. And uh, there were <laughs> not even a driveway. So that was a bit of a, an adjustment I had to make because everything was going really, really well right up until it wasn't. About 10 years ago, I decided to reinvent myself in addition to Danger Danger, which I love very much and is sort of my day job. I decided, listen, I want to go out there, I have more to say, and I have a lot of solo things going on. I do some video game things for Sonic the Hedgehog, and I do my own solo stuff. So thanks for mentioning that, because I really, you know, it's focused a little bit on that. I had some free time in between our, you know, Danger Danger schedule. As you know out there, we work, we're on about a four on 300 and some odd day off schedule. So there's a lot of free time for me to, to do other things and uh, put out a lot of solo albums, work very hard with that. And, and thank you for noticing because now I have the best of both worlds. I get to go out and have fun, tour the world with Danger Danger or some of my old friends. I went back to New Jersey and found some of my, my old friends from my solo band and it's just a lot of fun. So that's been, been really cool. And honestly, 
to be able to walk around with hologram nail polish and, and cool things and, and just have fun and be recognized and to be able to take photos and it means something to somebody, again, um, it's a lot better than, you know, I had, I had a rough couple of decades, I will tell you. Yeah, it's, it's a lot better than the past. Oh no, oh no, I was annoying, I was always annoying, but I was at least talented enough to overcome the annoying right. possible. No, but when the time came for grunge, as you referenced, the only way to survive was to become heavy and to grow a little, you know, grow a set and um, have a little bit of an edge. And I, so if you look at Danger Danger, if you look at the weak link in that equation, it was me. And, you know, I, who can blame somebody for trying to survive um, a sinking ship? And they, they decided uh, maybe to get heavier with another guy. It was nothing really between us, you know, that no fights, no anything. But if we're going to get a little heavier, this look wasn't going to cut it. So I, I, I was a little bit of a victim there. But hey, you know, things come full circle. And uh, the fans are always loyal, and they remember the original, and I love them. <laughs> All right, you know, honestly, it's the greatest thing, and it's I thank you for referencing the cruises and things. Big festivals now are the thing where people can go; they can see lots of their favorite bands from the day, um, and the cruises are awesome. I get to get up close and personal with everybody. Um, including the, every you know, disease and virus that they bring on these things. I go home and I'm sick for three weeks, but, but I would never even miss the next one. It's great. I walk around, I want to make everybody's photo the best photo they ever have. And um, honestly, I am thrilled that it means something to anybody. So I will keep showing up as long as it means something to them. It really does mean something to me. It's the best part of my life. And uh, it does make me feel like it's sort of everything's come full circle. Nothing was wasted. Um, and I, I, I just, it feels right. And I got to tell you, when I, I'm driving around now, in my, my new blue Corvette, thanks to you guys, I love you. And, and look what else I got. Look, well, look what I got now. I think I'm back. My new toy. This guy keeps me safe. This is Sarge. Mwah! This guy keeps me safe. Thank you, everybody. I love you. I really do appreciate the fact that at this age, you're continuing to let me live my dream. Also, I'd just like to say, please donate to a local no-kill animal shelter near you, because that's my thing. And I love you, and I know you're good people. Um, so thank you for this opportunity, and I hope to see you um, around soon, because apparently I'm back. If Sarge says I'm back, I'm back. He's back. I see, I see you out there. Hey, hey, no, no bathroom breaks until the next guy's up. Come on back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.